Trent location. We're in uh, the jungle of magnolia trees. I'm not sure if the camera is focused in on that, but that's fine because we're going to focus in on uh, being wired but tired or tired and wired. Whatever iteration of that phrase resonates with you, it's still the same crappy feeling of your body is like, no, but your mind is like all over the place. And really, I mean, not even your mind as well, just having that sort of jittery uneasiness or kind of sometimes you can kind of feel like uh, adrenaline is going through your veins. And so this is something that's really important to understand because when you're wired but tired, and that's what I'll refer to it as because I know there's all the different permutations there. It tells us a lot about, you know, what's going on underneath. But the other big reason that this is super important is that this is like one of the most common things I hear like day in and day out from people that are experiencing fatigue, exhaustion, just tired as all heck. And it's something that a lot of times people try to combat, but they're not able to do a whole lot about it. Just like how I'm not able to do a whole lot about the lighting situation here because, you know, it's kind of a nice morning out, not too hot. Um, and I wanted to get outside for this. And obviously I'm an expert, not on lighting, but fatigue here as well. So if you are a film lighting junkie, please forgive me from the bottom of my heart for having a little bit of you know, shadow there. Maybe we can lean back. And you can just take in the glory of my face there. But nonetheless, what we're going to talk about here, and I do have a, a little light here, but there's a bigger light in the sky that's really outshadowing that. So what we're going to talk about today is when you're wired but tired, what is this telling us about what's going on underneath? And no, it's not the same boring, oh, your cortisol is off, your melatonin is off story. It's a lot deeper than that. And then really what the effects of that are, because obviously it's miserable by itself, but what are all the little pieces in place here and how are they falling apart? And then another additional thing we need to consider, what are these compensatory behaviors that you're now going through? Which one of them are, okay, neutral at best, and which of them are like, okay, you should stop doing this now. Um, thumbs up if you like that little, that voice and that character there. That's my, that's my cat's voice. Uh, and if you don't have a voice for your animals at home, then this may not be the channel or video or source of information for you. Uh, but, you know, continuing on that, being able to really understand, okay, these are all the things going on. Now let's look at a lot of the conventional things or sort of, I mean, even I guess conventional wisdom as opposed to conventional medicine, but you know, some of the, the standard ways in which people are like, okay, let's try some vitamin C, some B vitamins, GAB of Larry, all these things, and all like all the testing as well, and really being able to break those down and see what's left standing in the dust, so to speak, of what's really important for you to be dealing with. And of course, what to be doing instead, once you understand that base level of knowledge and where your focus needs to be instead. So this will be a fun one here. So if it's something you're watching uh, right now, or maybe you're watching this at a later time, because in the next 20 minutes, we're going to cover all these things. So either watch it now, or if you're someone who's wired but tired, and you're in that time of the day of where you're just so exhausted, good time to watch this as well. So, but first, before we get to the good stuff, a little bit of housekeeping. Again, I'm, I'm still not your doctor. This is not medical advice. This is provided for informational purposes only. Everything here is an opinion. Always, always, always talk to your licensed healthcare provider before you do anything. All right? Don't make any decisions off of anything I say here today uh, in terms of, you know, your medical health. Always talk to that person. I think we get it. Okay. Anyway, that's almost like a, like a hallmark on these videos, our legal disclaimers. And so just really want to check in here because wired but tired, this is something where this was like, this is like where I lived for like nearly two years of where, you know, we can just start it at night here, being at a point of where almost ironically in the cosmic irony of your body's health, being at a point of where you were tired all, all freaking day here and dragging through the entire day, dragging through every single interaction. And when you are with people, you're just waiting for them to either shut the heck up so you can get back to a point where you can just Kind of tone things down or if you're out with people in a way where you're just waiting to go back home uh but either way at the end of the day i know for me it was around like sort of 
7 or 8 p.m., it really starts to kick in in terms of being, okay, my body just completely shut down, and but I'm still feeling this kind of like jitteriness here in a way, and also my mind's really whirling, and that would be something you, know, you, you carry into bed in a way in terms of, all right, your body is exhausted, but now it's almost as if you're like too tired to actually sleep. And now that's when the thoughts really start to kick in. Okay, a lot of anxiety. Okay, what about all those things I should have said? Okay, oh man, I had that. I should have said that in that argument. You know, all those things. And also worrying about all the things ahead and just kind of mentally kind of worrying around on firing all cylinders. That's really the night portion. But that's just really, in my opinion, where that begins. Because once you're set up like that, then that night of sleep is compromised and then that next day is compromised so on and so forth as you're in almost as if it's a cycle here and i think cycle's a, a fair enough phrase but it's really more like a, a downward spiral here of where you find yourself eventually adjusting to this this cycle of really just awful sleep and that next day being a huge struggle where you're up maybe you wake up early and you're again tired and wired or you're waking up and kind of immediately launching this overwhelm mode because you're kind of already sort of worrying about the day ahead and all the things you have to do and all of that. And just being at a capacity of where you're like, okay, then you kind of rush into your day. And then from down there, once the, the wireness wears off, now you're back into the state of exhaustion. And this is something that maybe you try to delay with some coffee. Okay, of course, you know, whenever I woke up, I was like, I think, what would I do? Like 4.30, now oh, here's some now I'm getting the direction of the light here. So I um, should have used my sundial to plan this out. But uh, essentially, being at a point of where I know I was, I think, what did I have? Like coffee, the, you know, the, the, the bull poop coffee. Um, that was my take on Bulletproof. And let's just avoid that. But like doing that at like 4, 5 a.m. Be like, okay, now I'm finally like, you know, turbocharged throughout the day but it was really just turning like my body onto the state of where it was clearly this unsustainable sort of path to burnout and that's really where this all leads being at a point of where you're not just going to quit what you're doing you're going to keep pushing and keep pushing and pushing and pushing and being at a point of where something's going to give for me it was my sleep absolutely fell apart and then from there being in a place of where okay now i'm not sleeping now a lot of emotional things are starting to kick up all right, emotional eating was a big part of what I would do because I would be really wired and I found the only thing that would calm me down would be carbs in a, in a big way. Or, you know, being something where, you know, going into a lot of depression, feeling just like every single day is going to be like this and almost as if I'm just working my butt off for this meager existence of just working, feel like I'm achieving there, but then no one really knows the low level of existence that we're living at and that's why this is something that you really want to be able to powerfully address because then you can have a lot more purpose and fulfillment pretty much everything you're doing because when you can show up refresh responsive and being able to really you know not only learn more because you're able to really sort of fully more engage when i say learn I, I really mean being able to really experience life at a higher level being able to really be more present, being a way of where every single interaction is a learning lesson for you to then have better interactions, whether that's with your boss who's a jerk and we can't fix that, but you're able to better respond to that. Or when you're home and you know certain things may usually upset you, but once you're in the state of where you're able to take out the, the wiredness and be able to insert some energy, that's when you're able to show up more fully as who you really are. And also being able to really move towards things that are exciting, being able to work out and actually hit those workout goals, being at a point of where Say, if, you know, you're working, either you can condense that work and be able to make it something s simple, smooth, and easy, and then you're able to enjoy all the life outside of work, or being in that point of where maybe you have something on the side, maybe you want to go for a certain promotion, or maybe something entirely different. But whatever it is, you're able to then set your sights on that and bring your full self to that. Because it's not just about, like, you know, being healthy. Yeah, that's, that's certainly cool. But it's really about what that health gets you. And that's what it's all about. And so when we're talking about wired but tired, one of the first things we need to recognize is what are the main things that have fallen apart, all right? Why is this one of the most important symptoms to recognize and then being able to plan things accordingly? So the first thing that this tells me is that your body's bioenergetics, okay? I know that sounds like a fancy woo-woo word, 
but it's really not. This is actually a field of science and based actually a lot around thermodynamics and all that fun stuff, but we'll just say bioenergetics. So when you're tired but wired, there's a big reason for this, and it's because your body can't produce energy. You might be saying, well, duh, Dylan, that's why I'm tired, I don't have energy, but stick with me here, because your body is designed to fundamentally produce many forms of energy, not just biochemical energy. There's photons involved, there's pressure waves across membranes and solitons. There's all these different forms of energy. It's not just all about ATP here. And your body is designed to not only produce this energy, but to allow it to flow here, okay? This is where, you know, when you can even consider some of the more Eastern things, they're a lot more up to speed in terms of being able to have the energy sort of transfer through your body, all right? Quick example of this, let's think about acupuncture, all right? It's something that you stick a little metal needle somewhere that then allows electrical energy in a way, a current to then flow better through these sort of energy lines throughout your body known as meridians. So that's just one example of the whole bioenergetic picture. Regardless of where your deficit is, and it depends on you to a very high degree here, when you're wired but tired, you're having a massive deficit in one of those things. That's why the mornings you feel like you've been hit by a truck. That's why you feel like, you know, after you exercise, you crash. That's why, you know, by the end of the day, you're just completely on the couch for the next, like, I guess for the last five to six hours of the day here, because your body can't really produce any energy whatsoever. And even if it could, there's probably a big deficit in being able to transfer and tr transduce that energy elsewhere throughout the body. And this really comes down to those levels that those metabolic engines that I speak about that not only are things like the mitochondria, all those fancy things, but also all the other pathways associated with that outside of the mitochondria, but still inside of the cell, obviously. And this is where, you know, when that starts to fall apart, that's when your body then needs to kick things into overdrive here. This is the wired component. Because it's, it's just like if you have, a, you know, a house, the power goes out. Oh, no. Okay, that means there is a there is an issue from the main power plant and all the lines that brought energy to you. Now you have to use your generator, which is loud as all heck, blowing out smoke and carbon monoxide, and it's really inefficient and can cause some uh, surges on your circuitry and all that stuff. That's what's happening in your body. You're relying on those backups way too much, and that's why eventually you have those breaking points because those generators will eventually break. They do. That's just how things are or you're stuck at a very low level function of, of these generators. And then that's when your body sort of starts to really struggle here. So the, the wiredness is from the generators having too many sort of surges in sort of how your body's producing energy, which, you know, that's represented by high cortisol, higher adrenaline, all that good stuff. But fundamentally, it's that those generators sort of kicking in like that. The other piece of this is that, you know, think about a time in terms of when you had to rush to get something done. Uh, and you were just like, oh, go, 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 go. And I want you to think about when you're trying to work with a team and trying to get something done. How hard was it to communicate with everyone because everyone's in this overdrive state? That's the second big component here. Your body's ability to fully coordinate all of its different systems, digestion, immunity, uh, thyroid, all of these systems will start to miscommunicate. Because one, everything is just going too fast. Adrenaline, cortisol are kind of shutting things down and trying to prioritize other things and really focus on the outcome of just keeping your butt active and alive throughout the day. And then the second thing is that the mechanisms by which they actually communicate, those will start to malfunction. That's why so many people, you're just never just wired but tired. You'll have sleep problems. Okay, All the sleep systems are falling apart inside of your brain. All that neural circuitry in there your gut starts to fall apart because, again, all the circuitry and all the communication in your gut will also start to manifest there. Your brain will not work as well because all the neurons need to communicate, and if they're not communicating, that's when you're having brain fog and you're not able to really communicate or concentrate or process something. And then, you know, immunity is something that you're not able to really fully get the most benefit out of in terms of either you're sick all the time or you're someone who is developing autoimmunity. And the reason I mention all these different systems is that digestion, central nervous system, and your immune system, those are some of the most energetically expensive processes in your body. So when energy is going haywire, those areas are going to have deficits 
sooner rather than later. Okay, that's a really important concept. And so as this goes on, uh, one of the things that will start to really fall apart, and this is kind of the, the consequences of when you don't have good bioenergetics, and this is when your metabolism has no coordination, instead it's in this discombobulated zone, this is when sleep starts to fall apart. Okay, And this is kind of a, the main point here is that sleep is never just about sleep. Because you can have, you know, a bad immune system, and that's going to affect how your sleep is because it's depleting certain metabolites and all that stuff. Or your gut can be off, and you're not delivering serotonin to make melatonin at night. And then when you have bad sleep, guess what happens there? What do you what do you make at night when you sleep? Well, I mean, there's a lot of things that you make, but the the main thing for sleep is to offset all of the oxidation in your body that you've accumulated throughout the day. All right, living about your life and going about all the things that you're doing, that's a slow, steady sort of damage to pretty much everything in your body throughout the day, and then it's supposed to be repaired at night. When you're not sleeping, guess what happens? That's when things just get more damaged and more damaged and more damaged, and one of the primary reasons is that your body is not making enough melatonin naturally. And when that's the case, that's when you're waking up multiple times a night, that's when you're even starting to have some anxiety around sleep. And being at this point of where you're waking up two, three, four times a night, maybe ultimately getting up at 4 a.m. and just feeling like absolute garbage. Or even like I was, you wake up in the middle of the night there and then you then you go to you know eat some carbs or whatever to help you fall back asleep. And then sometimes it turns into a carb binge and then you're, you're dealing with all of that. And as that's going on, you, you may be able to find ways to help kind of prop things up. Maybe you're taking uh, exogenous or you know melatonin in the pill there. That's just sort of prolonging the issue because the, the main issue is that your body is not producing enough of it by itself. And when that's the case, now your mitochondria, one of your main engines here, kind of that big power plant, that's falling apart. Because melatonin is the number one repair mechanism for your body's bioenergetic pathways. When you're not able to produce that in the exact quantity needed by yourself, then that's when things fall apart. Really critical piece. So not only are you having less energy, less things to sort of produce things and produce that energy, this is also when, you know, now your nervous system now has to go haywire. And as this is happening, this is when you're that person who is overreactive, okay, snappy, irritable. You are just that person who people look at you and they just know you're frustrated. Maybe your own family, they're avoiding you in the morning, they avoid you when you get home, or they just know not to speak to you in general, or they're having to be like, oh, hey, is now a good time to, to, to talk? And at the office as well. Or maybe you you know, you know, can put on a, a face, your, your customer service face, but still being at a point of where pretty much every meeting, every interaction, you're just very frustrated and even enraged at points. Being like, okay, how can my boss be doing this? How can I keep putting up with all these these people around me? Uh, you know, some probably less kind words are said, but you get the idea. And as this is happening, this is reflected by your sympathetic nervous system now into overdrive. Parasympathetics are now just kind of, they might as well be off here. And there's a, many ways this can go. Because as people progress, your sympathetics may go up and up and up and up, and eventually they have a breaking point. They do. And this is like sometimes people, this is a little bit more sort of technical, but you know, you'll have a really high HRV score because your sympathetic nervous system is pretty much kaput here. Okay, this is more the end stage of wired but tired. But if you're at that point of where your sympathetic's in overdrive, that's when you're, you know, not only waking up in the middle of the night, but like waking up and kind of like in this sort of nervous state or waking up with anxiety. Like literally the moment you wake up, you have this level of anxiety that just elevates throughout the day and then eventually having some sort of crash and then everything shutting off, and then back into the sympathetic nervous system overdrive. And when that happens, because when we're thinking about the sympathetic nervous system, it's obviously something that's throughout your entire body, through your spinal cord and all that good stuff, but then sort of the central area in your brain of where that lives, um, and we don't need to get into neuroanatomy, but now this place is now overactive. It's always really churning and burning, and the, the bad part about this sort of where the, the seat of the sympathetic nervous system in your brain, now it's affecting other parts, really important parts. Not only sleep, but also now your hormones at the hypothalamus pituitary level here. And as that's going on, this is why, wired but tired, you know, how's our intimacy when we're wired but tired? Pretty much non-existent or obligatory. 
you know, how is our ability to have good body composition? Because when your hormones aren't working right, that's when really no matter what you eat, you're still going to be putting on fat and weight. Or it's going to be impossible for you to lose it either because your hormones aren't set up. Other things that come into play there, that's also when all the hormones that reduce pain, like endorphins, uh, alpha, MSH, all these other hormones, or neuropeptides rather, now they're not able to work fully. And this is how a lot of people with either just these very strange pains and sensations that they're having, or maybe you are at that point where you have a label of full-blown fibromyalgia, now you're really in a bad spot because the wiredness has really absolutely like crushed your ability to actually have any sort of hormones that are working in your body here. And so that's why, and we'll get into kind of the, the testing involved around that because you can look at your hormones all ding-dong day here. But if your nervous system is still like in this overdrive state, you know, I don't care how much progesterone, DHEA, all, all the stuff you throw into the system, it's not going to really matter because your body is not able to properly make its own. And so that kind of brings us to the, like, as you're kind of going through all these issues, you know, the bad sleep, bad repair mechanisms, nervous systems going crazy. Now you're getting to these compensatory sort of patterns. And one of the, the ones that I was actually going to make a post about this earlier today, but, uh, you know, all the things you do to prop yourself up into place here and caffeine being one of the, the number one because, or really any other stimulants here, but caffeine, any of these other stimulants, now you have a car here that is already blowing smoke out of the engine. And now you're putting like nitric oxide boosters on it. And I think that's what they're called. I haven't watched a fast and furious movie recently, but now you're putting these like turbochargers on something that's already falling apart. And then that is when, well, I mean, what do you think is going to happen? Are things going to hold out or are they going to break down even faster and even sooner? They're going to break down even sooner, even faster because you have all these compensatory pathways in place. But the real tricky part is that Dylan, I have a life to live. I need to keep things all together. And I get it because I've been there myself but now on the other side and seeing people on the other side as well how sustainable is that you know how many more days are you willing to keep going on of being hopped up on caffeine and even being at that point where caffeine's not doing it for you anymore and now you're bringing in like other things into the picture like maybe nootropics maybe you're even like you know things like stimulants in terms of like a uh, modafinil people even use even like Ritalin, things of that nature, Adderall, those sorts of things. And this isn't, again, because as you're bringing those things into your system, you're actually bringing systems back online, which, yeah, great, you can you can do something, but the systems are broken in the first place, and you're going to break them even faster here. That's why, like, these things, yes, they get you through the short term, but the long-term trajectory is slow, steady damage. And by slow, I mean, like, you know, <laughs> relatively quickly over the course of your lifetime and not only is that the problem this is also when you get into i'm just trying to manage things stage and this is when you start to accept a lower level of what your life is meant to be this is when now instead of full potential you're living in mediocrity or at the the lowest sort of thing you can do just to barely scrape by and that's not what any of us are here to do obviously and that's why there's a lot of tactics in place in terms of trying to deal with these issues. So with that, I want to talk about kind of the, the major things that people will do and move towards and what you may want to consider as well. So this is important here. So with this, the one thing I want to talk about is testing. All right. Lab testing overused. Yes. Okay. Work with your licensed healthcare provider to rule out all the major things that are easy to identify. Okay. But after that, all these sort of lab panels, you know which ones I'm talking about, where you, you, you pee on paper and you get a nice, you know, big chart of all the th hormones that you're making or not making, or uh, some of the big uh, other labs or food sense. You're, you're doing all these labs and trying to figure out why is my body like this? You don't need to do that. Okay, because none of them are going to, they're just, well, first, I am like, for anyone who's experiencing this, you tell me a lab panel, and I am willing to bet exactly what the values you have on there. 
that's just how things pan out. Because when you understand how the sort of the system is falling apart here, that's when I'm like, okay, cortisol is going to be like this, melatonin is going to be like that, okay, DHEA is going to be like that, progesterone is going to be like that, and even if it's not, you know, almost doesn't matter because your body is actually adjusting to a way of where yes, the actual values of your hormones may be in some sort of variance here or up and down, but the other thing no one's considering are the receptors, okay? So when you're not really measuring the receptors, because you know every hormone has to bind to a receptor to work, but the thing is your body will actually change the availability of these receptors as you're going through these changes. So, you know, comparing your cortisol to a person who is relatively healthy, you know, you're not gonna really it's not really a good question to ask. Because they have a different receptor count, you have a different receptor count, and the, the numbers don't apply here. That's why the way you function is always way more important than any lab here. Because, yeah, the numbers don't lie, but, you know, it doesn't really matter. They're, they might be telling us the truth about something that has no relevance whatsoever. Okay, just because things, you can count them, does not mean that they count. The other thing is that you, when you do these labs, now you're on the lab rabbit hole. Let's do this, and let's retest. Let's do this, and retest. Let's do this, and you don't. You don't need to do that. That's called guessing. That's guess. That is literal guesswork here. Okay. Yes, it's scientific and blah 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 blah. But the thing is, when you are able to, you know, really simply understand things, that's when you can just make a few adjustments. Like think about, you know, if your refrigerator broke down and you tried to Google it by yourself. All right, now you're learning about condensers and all these things. And you're like, okay, does my condenser look like this condenser on the screen? Or you just like have a professional come along, they like tap it in one place, and then they're like, yep, it's fixed. Because they know what to look for. They don't need all the sort of guesswork and diagnostics that are there. So that's the kind of the one thing I wanted to get out of the way. My my blood boils over blood tests and saliva tests and all the other things. The other things are a lot of the, the, the supplements and pills that will get thrown at you. So the one thing, I mean, we'll just kind of quickly go through all these things. Vitamin C, okay? Oh, yeah, we're in this oxidative state, so let's just blast it with an antioxidant. Uh, yeah, you may seem a little bit of a boost. You probably won't. But the thing is, remember the whole coordination of metabolism that I was talking about? That depends on the proper amount of free radicals that you have around. And antioxidants will get rid of all the free radicals and you just ablate it, your body's ability to actually communicate with itself and re-establish its metabolism and coordinate it. Womp womp. Um, that's not what you want in a capacity. But, you know, it's just it's just so much easier. You'd be like, oh, take a gram of vitamin C. That'll your, your adrenals make vitamin C and this is adrenal fatigue and you need more vitamin C. If it was really that easy, I mean, truck drivers, no disrespect, we need to get things around and, and transport them and support free markets. But, you know, just being able to look at a fuel gauge and then fill it back up, that's not, you know, the simplicity of your body. If it was that easy, a truck driver could be a doctor, just look at some labs. Oh, this is, this says L here. Let's, you know, put some more vitamin C or some more uh, B vitamins here, which kind of brings me to the next point which is B vitamins. And this comes kind of almost in line with the idea of the compensatory stimulants you have in place, right? Because B vitamins, what are they going to do? They allow to transfer carbons in your metabolism, science, blah, blah, blah. But the more important part is that they essentially will reopen some metabolic pathways that have previously shut down. What did we already say about that? Those things are shut down for a reason. So that your body and all of its pathways of producing energy and transferring it don't get damaged more. But you said, yep, yeah, screw that, let's turn it back on. And now that's why people, they start B vitamins, get a little bit of a boost, and then after some time, weeks, maybe a month, now you're back to square one. That's just what happens. And then another thing that people will do, you know, the, the adaptogens, oh, macaroot, oh, ashwagandha, oh. Again, these are things that now they're into sort of the two categories here, like the antioxidants and sort of reopening metabolic pathways. Again, you're kind of fully ablating all of your body's ability to communicate with each other, and now you're kind of reopening things that have shut down for a reason. That's where they kind of fall into those two things. And we've already, you know, beat up sleep aids enough because, you know, if you're taking melatonin, your body's never going to produce the exact melatonin that you need. And now melatonin as an antioxidant is going to, again, destroy that ability for your body to properly communicate. Same thing if you take serotonin or 5-HTP, um, tryptophan, whatever you call it, it's going to have the same issue. Same with GABA as well. It's just going to 
completely force the system to one direction and not allow it to naturally balance and function. So what you need to be doing instead is really being able to, okay, understand where your main key deficits in your bioenergetic pathways are and how to really finally coordinate everything but be able to do it like all in the right order because you know think about this whole the the power plant the power lines and the sort of generator system you know you need to be able to really establish what do i need to do first here because if the power plants are really shut off okay let's prepare the generators first but say if you're in a scenario your power lines really stink so we need to repair those before we even think about the the power plants in a way you know it's, it's really about being able to understand where those key deficits are in your body's ability to produce and also transfer and you know storage of energy as well really being able to identify those in a really really big way and then being able to make sure that the system all the sort of players involved are now able to fully you know coordinate the use of this energy it's just like an economy in a way you need to get the certain goods over here and then you know that person the, the seller um, sort of gets it to the, the buyer here and it's off to uh, California or whatever and being able to really make sure everyone's on the same page because if it's not you can have all the energy available but if everyone's not on the same page that's when you can't use it that's when you're wired but tired, okay? That's exactly what that is. And so really the, the big sort of fork in the road here is to being able to, you know, either, okay, let's try to, you know, apply some of this to what you already may know, but the thing is, when we're talking about sort of the, the strategies you've been given by people who are just like, oh, take these supplements, oh, listen to my podcast and take this new supplement I'm gonna talk about in the next episode, that's just keeping you in the same really sort of cycle here of more band-aids, more band-aids, more band-aids as the wound is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And being able to deal with that, that's going to keep you kind of on that path of really staying in, in the same spot. Sure, you may understand a little bit more about it, but information is one thing. And we can never mistake that for transformation. And that's what I want to offer to you with our free breakthrough sessions. So this is where we connect with you in like 45, 60 minutes on a conversation here and really talk about, okay, where are these big deficits in you? What are the consequences of that? What does that look like? And being able to get really crystal clear on how this is showing up for you. Because when you get really clear on the problem, and then you can get really clear on the solution and be able to be at that point of where you're, you know, your head hits the pillow, you melt away, you sleep through the night, wake up, feel awesome. And now you're in this positive cycle of where you're able to really look forward to the day and be able to be that person who's able to really build up in their life and show up so much more fully. That's what we help you really break through and being able to do. And so if you're someone who, I mean, you're not only wired, but tired, but also sick and tired of one, not only being sick and tired, two, sick and tired of all the crap that doesn't work, and also three, sick and tired of the cliche of sick and tired, you know, if that's who you are, and you are really, you know, one of those people who's dead set, ambitious, you know that a life of where you're managing these things is unacceptable, and you know that next level is where you deserve to be, then this call is for you. And so go to optimalcircadianhealth.com forward slash talk, and, you know, pick a time there and then you know that's, that's pretty much it you just show up answer your phone at the time of the call and we'll be able to help you out and be able to get you to that point and be able to really show you okay these are the paths available to you and being able to finally see yourself there so it's a really you know fun time really the best 45 60 minutes you can spend on your health this year and but you know if you're someone who thinks it's another simple fix caught up in the old ways or you're just looking for more information because remember it's not about information it's really about transformation if that's what you're not ready for then this call is really not for you you may need to get there in some other way really reconnect with where you are right now and where you want to go and then book a call but for now this is for people who are are really truly ready to be done with wired but tired and get onto a life that's so much more exciting and fulfilling and so if that's you go ahead go to optimal circadian health dot com forward slash talk and book a get your time slot there and then that's as simple as it is and these are you know really fun and exciting conversations to have because especially the the wired but tired like when, when someone's mentioning that i'm like ooh that's exactly where i was this will be really fun to you know see what's going on in this person's life and being able to you know see what their goals are and you know how we can connect them there and i wish i could have this conversation with myself Oh, geez, was that 10 or 11 years ago? I'm kind of like losing track of when that was now. 
Um, but just being able to be at a point of where you don't have to Monday through Friday just absolutely struggle to make it through every single day and then using the weekends as a crash and just kind of resting or maybe do do something social but it's miserable being able to get you out of that and onto a point of where you know your, your friends are like oh my god you're back and being at a point where you can have that normalcy not only in your energy levels but so many of these other compounding issues like gut issues being able to eat more food to be able to go to a restaurant and not have to like freaking worry about everything all right being able to you know, do something physical, like go on a hike, go kayaking, and knowing that you can make it the entire way through just like everyone else. That's what it's really all about. And being able to, you know, want that life, that's what we want to help you actually fulfill that need. So if that's, again, you, like I said before, breakthrough session is for you. So go to optimalcircadianhealth.com forward slash talk, and we'll see you there. All right. So thank you so much for listening, everyone. And I hope you have a wonderful rest